we have about as startling a group of documents as you'll ever hear about from Judicial Watch. I'll read the headline. Documents reveal Obama State Department official in contact with Russian embassy, quote, political chief, one month before Trump inauguration. So these are State Department documents that we received in response to a request, and this is the important part about this request. It wasn't a request, oh, just give us documents about what this uh, one official was up to. We wanted to know specifically the following. All records and communications between State Department officials, including John Kerry, Clinton, Victoria Nuland, who was a top uh, Europe official, on the one hand, and British national Christopher Steele and or employees and contra contractors of Steele's company, Orbis Business Intelligence, on the other hand. All records and or memoranda provided by Christopher Steele or his firm Orbis to State Department officials. All records in the custody of the State Department retained to the provision of documents to British National Steele and his firm. And all records uh, created by Jonathan Weiner relating to research compiled by Christopher Steele. Well, who's Jonathan Weiner? Well, Jonathan Weiner was the Libya guy for John Kerry, very close to John Kerry. And we have a ton of documents that show that Weiner was a close friend of Christopher Steele, compatriot of him, had a long working relationship with him, was helping him actually set up meetings while he was at the State Department, was also in communication with him about his dossier. Remember, Christopher Steele, part of the Clinton Fusion GPS spy ring. Weiner wrote an, an op-ed in the Washington Post which I printed out but didn't bring with me to read to you, but you can look it up. Search for Jonathan Weiner and Christopher Steele, it will pop up. And he admits to compiling records against President Trump and sharing them with State Department. He was helping write the dossier, talking to Clinton officials, uh, campaign people and associates about Russia dirt. And now we have documents that show that Steele, excuse me, that Jonathan Weiner was in communications with the Russian political chief at the embassy for Russia a month before the uh, inauguration of President Trump. Can you believe it? And that's not even the most, that, that there's even worse material. Well, I don't know if it's worse. It shows that they were in contact again with Steny Hoyer's office. Who's Steny Hoyer? He is the number two in the House Democrat caucus. You got Nancy Pelosi, and then you got Steny Hoyer. So you got Victoria Newland collaborating with Steny Hoyer on Russia, and you've got Anthony Weiner collaborating with Russia on Trump targeting. So it, why, is the, why is the nature of the request important? Because we were asking about steel material. We we're asking about Russiagate documents. And the responsive documents was this communication with the Russian. Russian embassy in Washington, D.C. It was a 10-minute call on December 23rd, just before Christmas, 2016, 28 days before the inauguration of Donald Trump. It was a phone call with Alexei uh, Vladimir, Vladimirovich Skosarev, the political chief at the Russian embassy. And, he's taught, and he then sends the email around, and I have the email here. I'll show you what it looks like. Skosarev is, the, uh, again, the Russian he was talking to. And you see this white material here? Okay, you got some print. Got some white material there. And then there's a full readout here. You know what the full readout is? It's redacted. You know why it's redacted? Because it's classified. So you have classified communications with the Russians about something related to Russiagate. They were obviously trying to get Trump. I don't know how else you would interpret this document because it's responsive to the Christopher Steele request. And he's sharing it with uh, Victoria Newland, 
and other top officials at the State Department. By the way, it was sent on unclassified systems, so you've got a BlackBerry being used to send classified information, so scandal on top of scandal. And the other big document is the Steny Hoyer document between Victoria Nuland, who was orchestrating a lot of this Russiagate smearing of President Trump, and this is Steny Hoyer's national security advisor, Toria. Sending, her, sending the email to Victoria Newland on the date is the November 28th. It was the delight to speak today, notwithstanding the context. You've been a warrior on these issues, and I look forward to speaking further to preserve and wherever possible strengthen the important work you have done. I fo I'll follow up regarding a possible working group meeting. Huh. All about Russiagate. Thanks, Daniel, and this is the response. I look forward to continuing our collaboration in whatever capacity life brings. Copied here is Jonathan Weiner, who has some legal ideas that may be of interest to you and Congressman Hoyer. And then he writes back, the national security official for Hoyer, Daniel Silverberg, writes back, great, Jonathan, I'm all ears. Do you think Steny Hoyer should be questioned about what he was getting from Jonathan Weiner, the Christopher Steele? Rep well, essentially personal representative, it looks like, at the State Department. Will Jonathan Weiner be asked about his communications with Russia, targeting Trump, and what he talked about with the political chief? The political chief at the, U at the Russian embassy. That's Russia intelligence, guys. So the same State Department that's whining, that's whining about President Trump demanding accountability from Ukraine, I haven't heard any whistleblowers talking about them undermining the incoming President of the United States by colluding and collaborating with Russia. Have you? Judicial Watch is doing a whistleblowing here. This is unbelievable material. We've got proof the Obama State Department was colluding with Russia against President Trump, even before he was inaugurated. Of course, we already had proof they were colluding against President Trump. Remember the documents that we have showing that this same State Department, Victoria Nuland, John the Weiner, all these others, were talking to Hoyer. We're talking to Democrats in the Hill, shoveling classified information. in the weeks after President Trump was elected to the House and the Senate. And it wasn't because they were conducting oversight. It's because they wanted to get Trump. They said at the one, in the one email that we have uncovered, they say, remember the urgency of this. The urgency was the President getting inaugurated. And then I think the day before the inauguration or whatever, someone sends an email out about all this material going out, and he says, we made the deadline. What was the deadline? The inauguration of the President of the United States. If this material out of the Obamacare State Department, which was classified, was being shared in an appropriate way, it wouldn't matter if Trump was president or not. It would have been done in the ordinary course. This is why the coup is occurring, folks, because they don't want you and they want the Justice Department to investigate this. This is why the president and the Republicans are being denied basic due process rights, because they don't want to bring in people like Jonathan Weiner. They don't want to bring in the whistleblower, who obviously has an, a hit, uh, an agenda against President uh, Trump. They, want to, they don't want to bring in John Kerry. They don't want to bring in Christopher Steele. They don't want to bring in Joe Biden or Hunter Biden. It's a protection racket. It's an effort to obstruct justice. But you know what? It's not obstructing Judicial Watch because Judicial Watch is just in court doing what we do best, suing for records that the government's refusing to give us and wants to cover up and getting them. And we've uncovered smoking gun records showing collusion with the House Democrats, 
on Russiagate and collusion with the Russians targeting Trump on Russiagate. You know, I, t I tell you, I don't use this word lightly, but when I see what's going on with President Trump, with all the deep state bureaucrats rushing to uh, mischaracterize his work, oppose his agenda, not in a lawful political way, but just to resist it because they think they know better and that the bureaucrats have more power than the president. And when I see individuals like this colluding with foreign governments to undermine President Trump, even before he's inaugurated, you know what word comes to mind? Sedition. This is a malicious, seditious conspiracy against President Trump. It began before he was elected, before, well, in many ways before he was elected. But remember the insurance policy. It's a sedition. And the conspiracy went into overdrive when he was elected. We have the document showing this. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.